Got another question here on the AS enthalpy changes topic. So we're up to number eight now. As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so we'll make a start. So effectively, we've got to calculate the enthalpy change for reaction one, but we can't do it directly. We're going to need to use the information about reactions two and three to apply to the cycle to get this value out. So Hess's law says that the overall enthalpy change for a reaction is independent of the pathway or the route. It only depends on the initial and final stages. So you can see reaction one or route one, I could call it, is just starting here, finishing there. Well, if you take this red route that I've drawn on here, that also starts there and finishes there. So if we take the enthalpy change for reaction two, but then we're going to have to subtract the enthalpy change for reaction three because this arrow has gone in the wrong direction. We can actually find this enthalpy change here. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, so there's all the information I'm going to need for the calculation of delta H2. So we've got a calorimetry experiment. So we can work out the mass of the solution that was in that polystyrene cup by subtracting this value from this. So the solution whose temperature was changed had a mass of 103.01 grams. The temperature has gone up, so it's an exothermic reaction by five degrees C. And that many grams of magnesium carbonate was used. So the first thing we need to do is calculate the energy change in the solution. So we do that by using the Q equals MC delta T equation. So the mass of the solution was that Specific heat capacity of the solution is 4.18, so we're told it's the same as water, and the delta T is 5. So it's that many joules, it's that many kilojoules. Next thing we do is work out the moles of magnesium carbonate in this case that was used in the experiment, mass over MR, 0.05 moles. So delta H2 is the Q over the moles, so the kilojoules over the moles, minus, because it was exothermic, temperature's gone up five degrees C, 43.06 kilojoules per mole. So there's my little equation from the start of the video. So remember, we've got to calculate delta H1. We've just found out delta H2, so we need to do that minus that. So delta H1 comes out at plus, it's got to have a sign with a delta H value. So you, obviously your calculator wouldn't have had that plus sign on, but you have to include it. So it's plus 93.04 kilojoules per mole. 